What's good everybody? It's your boy David. Today we are a Hilltop Artist and Educational Studio in Tacoma, Washington. We have Trenton Kiocho alongside his assistant Jacob Wilcox creating a reticello pattern. Reticello is considered to be the pinnacle of glass design. Due to the complexity and the difficulty of this pattern, you won't find it on a regular object of glass. Reticello requires two patterns or two roll-ups. Each roll-up will be twisted in opposite directions. We begin with creating the collar, which is the mass of glass that will be utilized to roll up our pattern. Our collar should be about one-third the size of our pattern. Now we can also use a pie divider to ensure that we're exact with our measurements, instead of eyeballing it. With our collar complete, we can set it aside and begin heating our canes. Our heating station is about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit and it's powered by natural gas. Moving the plate back and forth, we can ensure more of an even heat. Then after every heat, we are also flipping the plate to ensure that the same canes aren't being continuously heated. We're looking for the canes to round out on its edge. The canes on the right are ready, while the canes on the left are a little cold. There's not enough of an orange aura, so with the squeeze, a large heat, and the flip, these canes should be ready for a roll-up. Our canes are being heated up on a kiln shelf lined with kiln wash to prevent the glass from sticking during the heat. Using a whisk broom, we can wipe away any remaining debris or dust that may have settled. Using our marver, our steel table, we can begin to seal any gaps between the canes. Now Homeboy did an incredible job on this one. You can't even find the start or the end. The texture from the first cup is very important, especially on the inside of it. This texture will ultimately allow air bubbles to be trapped. Our first cup will be twisted to the left side. Now we're taking a lot of these heats. Now fortunately, I'm going to cut most of these out to give you just the best action. To create a closed bubble and continue the glass blowing process, we are squeezing down the opening at the top. We continue the twist of our canes using our marver and then transition over to using a mold to twist. Due to the heat and the friction, as we turn, we're twisting or buckling the surface of the canes. As we complete the twist, it is now time to separate the usable glass from the steel rod itself. Using our jacks, we can squeeze down a constriction or a breakoff point close to the blowpipe. If we do it far away from the blowpipe, we can begin to waste some of our pattern. The yellow hose is attached to a mouthpiece and the opposite side is attached to the blowpipe. This will allow us to introduce air. Our jacks are like our multi-purpose tools. There's so many different ways that we can use these. When we see a little bit of fire coming from the glass, it oftentimes is the beeswax that these jacks ride on to prevent us from scratching or scarring the surface. A sculpture punny is presented and attached. This punty will only be temporary, so it will need to break later off in the demonstration. Although it's temporary, it's necessary to begin to work on the opposite side. With a few drops of water to the jack line and a tap, the glass will release at its weakest spot. I don't know 
although we're working with black colored glass, due to the heat, everything will turn bright red and orange. With our first cup complete, it is placed inside of an annealer, a temporary warming oven about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. With that aside, we begin to create the second cup, the second pattern. Everything needs to be done exactly the same. Same size canes, same amount of canes, and same amount of twists. If you are enjoying these breakdown videos, don't forget to subscribe and like. Just like the previous one, we're beginning with creating a collar. Our canes are made out of a black duro surrounded by clear glass. Duro meaning it is an extra stiff color. We take about three heats to make the canes malleable enough for the roll up and a lot of flipping in between heats. Two metal pieces are placed at the end of the pattern to prevent the canes from accidentally rolling off. Now it's very important that our canes meet side to side, that they don't overlap. So just like a zipper, we're slowly closing down the seam. Our second cup will be twisted to the right side, and it's very important that they have the same amount of twist. To ensure that they are identical, we repeat the process start to finish. We spent a few hours getting up to this point. So I actually didn't capture this unfortunately, but we essentially just inserted this bubble inside the cup that we made previously. We're going to see an up close shot of this pattern now, but there is a bubble trapped between every intersecting line. And again, that is created because of the texture. We are using our marver and a propane torch to seal both cups to one another. And here we see the pinnacle of glass design, Redicello. This technique was created by Muranese artists on the island of Murano, Italy. I bet you I can sell a bunch of out there too. With our pattern complete, we can now begin to condense the bubble. Using a wooden block, we can repeat this process a few times. Peach came into the boathouse one time. By condensing the bubble, we are ensuring that when we reintroduce air, that our bubble will expand evenly. Oftentimes, the tip of the reticello pattern is removed. Now, this is to ensure that our lines come to a singular point of termination. Can you drop that on the table or something? It's not gonna throw it down, right? I was gonna throw it away. I'm gonna capture that. Gonna and there is a lot of waste throughout the process, but here we can keep this remaining amount of reticello pattern as a souvenir or even a coaster. And here we see all the canes coming to a single point. With our pattern complete, we can now separate the usable glass from the steel rod, once again using our jacks. To begin to work on the opposite side, we're using another sculpture punny. 
A sculpture punty is usually used for something more complex, but when you've spent a lot of time working on something, it's just an extra safety net that you can use. The remaining amount of pattern is placed inside of a bucket of water. Now this is ultimately to free the blowpipe from the glass on the end. Using a wet pad and newspaper, we can complete our reticello pattern by turning it into a blank. This blank will be turned into a bowl filled with Filipino-inspired themes and ideas. Until then, it will be placed inside of an annealing oven to cool back to room temperature. Then we can inspect the cup and ensure that we are happy with the quality before we continue to invest more time. This completes part one of our reticello blank, but in part two, we will be creating the bowl. So stay tuned for that. It's your boy, David. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe.